I'm Chloe, and you're watching Disney Channel. Hello you guys, today we are going to give you all the Disney tips and tricks that you need and answering some questions that you already asked us. During this pandemic, sorry to bring it up, but we are very sad. We miss Disney. If you know our family at all, we go to Disney pretty often, often. And I was actually supposed to go the week I got sent home from college. We're kind of sad about it. Kind of sad. We keep on watching videos and then we just decided why don't we just make our own video. The first part of this is going to be all the tips, but if you want to skip to the Q&A section, I'll put a timestamp on the screen. Our first tip is fast passes. Fast passes won't get you straight on a ride, but it'll definitely put you in a line that's much shorter than the original. That is a key component to remember because it is just a shorter line. It's not getting you past the line. I mean, sometimes, but it's just a shorter line than like an hour and 20 minute wait. Sometimes fast pass lines look even longer than the actual line. And you always hear people being like, oh. the fast pass line is longer than the standard line. Wrong. The fast pass line just doesn't loop around like all the other lines do. It just takes you straight there most of the time. And so if you ever get in the fast pass line that goes past the actual line, you're still gonna get on faster. Don't be tricked. Don't get in the normal line thinking you'll get on faster. Also, if you're staying at a Disney owned property, you can book your fast passes up to 60 days in advance. And then if you're just a normal guest, you can book fast passes up to 30 days in advance. So make sure you get those before they all run out. Our next tip is about mobile ordering. If you get the app, then you can mobile order your food. Basically, you just place your order and you can sit down at the restaurant or the food service that you're at and just wait for your food while sitting in the shade in AC. Like, don't make yourself wait in line when you don't have to. Sit down, catch up, grab your ketchup, <laughs> and then you'll get a notification on your phone when your food is ready and then you just walk up to the pickup section and your food's there and you didn't really have to stand in line. You are gonna wait about like 10 minutes, but at least you're sitting. That leads us into our next tip, which is getting the app. So the app is called My Disney Experience. So if you get this app, you can do things like mobile ordering your food. Um, this is where you see your fast passes. They're all gonna be on your phone. You can see wait times. Also, a really cool detail that not a ton of people know about is that you can actually plug in any location and it'll give you walking directions to the exact attraction that you're trying to go to or food place and it'll give you the fastest route and it's actually really cool because it gives you like a GPS throughout the park. Our next tip is portable phone chargers. Now it's very important to bring your own, but if you don't bring your own, then you can easily buy what we call a fuel rod. What we call a fuel <laughs> rod. <laughs> we did the pros. It's called a fuel rod and you can buy them at certain kiosks. And then if one of them dies, then you can trade it in for a new one and you don't even have to pay. So you pay once and then you're set. Or you can always bring your own. Our next tip is about getting water. So water is really important because a lot of the times when you go to the parks, it'll be hot and humid in either California or Florida. So we highly recommend getting waters frequently and you can go up to any stand and just ask for a cup of water and it's free and they'll just give it to you. So stay hydrated, drink your water, it's free. Our next tip is transportation. So if you're traveling in a big group, I honestly, if you can, if it's accessible to you, I highly recommend getting a rental car. That is the easiest way to get around Disney, especially Disney World because it's very big. In California, you don't really need a rental car, but in Florida, it's the smartest option. Also, it's good to be aware that at Disney World, a lot of the theme parks don't have parking lots. And by that, I mean Magic Kingdom. I don't think, does that I think it's just Magic Kingdom. Magic Kingdom doesn't have a parking lot. So you have to go to the transportation center. So you can drive your car to the transportation and ticket center, park it. You can either take a monorail to get there or a boat. That's another good thing is to take the monorail. It goes around to most parks. Um, that's a lie. The monorail goes to Epcot and the Magic Kingdom. And then the Skyliner, which is new, which we haven't seen before, go to is it Hollywood Studios and Epcot. Epcot. So those are some good public transportation things as well that you should take note of. If you're taking the bus, the boat, the Skyliner, the monorail, I highly suggest that you allow at least an hour to get to wherever you're going because it's definitely gonna take some time waiting on the right 
bus, the right monorail. Please allow time for that because it'll definitely take a big chunk out of your day. Okay, our last tip for today is to decide whether you're a rope drop family or an extra magic hours family or both. So rope drop is what they do every morning at the parks and basically they have a rope and it literally drops the time that the park opens and you get to go on all your rides. There's not a lot of people there because it's really early. The lines are really short and it's great. Most of the time with rope drop, you can find like one ride that you like go to first, like the one that like you really think is gonna have a long wait time and that's the one you kind of run to in the morning. So our family is an extra magic hours family. So what we do is we kind of base our schedule around what parks have extra magic hours at night. Also, there's extra magic hours in mornings as well, but we don't wake up that early. So we normally get to the parks, we wake up at like 10, cause you're out late, we get ready, we go. And when we stay as late as we can. And so this can mean like 12 for some parks, maybe even like one o'clock in the morning. But basically we kind of start our day later and then just try to get the most out of doing things at night. Um, there's two fireworks shows. So maybe like going to a popular ride during one of the fireworks show to get a shorter wait time and then saving those big rides for the extra magic hours helps keep wait times down for the day. Extra magic hours are only for people who are staying at Disney owned properties. So if people live in Florida or if they're staying on an off property, then they cannot be there. So that means that the wait lines are gonna be shorter. Also all the kids are gonna be at home because it's 1 a.m. Or your last option is that you could be both. So picture this, you wake up, rope drop, ride two or three rides that you wanted to ride. This means you get up at like 6 a.m. Yeah, probably. very early. But then you can go home, take a nap, chill, maybe look around the resort or something, and then you go back out at night for extra magic hours. It's a little crazy. We can't do it personally. If you are able to do that, go for it. <clears throat> Live your Disney dream. All right, those are some of the tips we have that we just wanted to share in this video. And now we're gonna answer some of the questions that we got. What is your favorite memory there? I'll go first. Okay. <laughs> My favorite memory is just the first one that comes to mind. So before this memory, my whole family would go. I'm used to going with like my whole entire family, but this time it was just me, Lily, and my mom. <laughs> and it was during Halloween time and I was probably in like third or fourth grade. And I remember we flew there and that night we went to the parks and we rode the boat to the park and we were trick or treating throughout Disney. And that's just like my favorite memory because it was so different and it was so like fast paced. And I just remember like getting off the plane and going straight to the parks and it was just a lot of fun. Disney during Halloween time is definitely really fun. My favorite memory is like one of those things that were just like all the pieces like align so perfectly. But we had like a really random number this trip. It was like seven people or something. And this was back when the fast passes were like physical pieces of paper that you just carried around. And so we were getting on the monorail about to go to the Magic Kingdom like kind of later at night. And this man walks up to us and is like, Hey, I have some extra fast passes. Do you want them? And we were like, well, yeah, but like we have seven people. Like we don't, you probably don't have seven. And he's like, oh no, I have seven fast passes. For Big Thunder Mountain, which is my mom's favorite ride. Is it your favorite ride? Or it was, no, it's not mine. So he gives us seven fast passes to like a few family members' favorite rides. So we, you know, we go there. It's like perfect timing. We like get right on the ride, like during the fast pass time slot. And as we're going up the little hill, fireworks start going off and it was just like, Ah, like it was one of those things that like couldn't have worked out better for us. It was like a magical little Disney experience. It yeah. Was, it was like fate. That was really cool. All right, next question. What's your go-to snack at either park? I'm gonna have to say my go-to snack is probably soft serve. <laughs> I look forward to it almost every time. And it's not even like specific to Disney, but not a lot of places have soft serve, I feel like. And Disney's is really good. I highly recommend it if you haven't had it. It's either soft serve or a churro. I was also gonna say a churro, but then honestly, like my go-to snack is popcorn, like all the time. Like the Disney popcorn, it's just so good. And then they have a way of like getting the smell out into the street. And so you're just walking around and you smell popcorn and yeah, it always hits. If you're spot. walking down Main Street, they pump scents to make you buy stuff. Also, but that's for another video. Mickey pretzels. Next question. If you could ride only one Disney ride for the rest of your life, which would it be and why? For me, it would definitely have to be Space Mountain. To be specific, the one in Florida. I just love Space Mountain. That's the one out of like all the big, big kid rides, 
that's the one I started writing first. So I just have grown up with it. And I just have these memories of like, I think it was like every time during the parades were happening, me and my family would be like, oh, let's go because they're not gonna be busy. And it was just like late at night and we would always ride Space Mountain and it was just my favorite ride forever. It's always that ride we do like at the very end of the night. I would probably say, this isn't doesn't have like some backstory or anything, but Avatar, Flight of Passage. Um, Flight of Passage. Oh my God, it's new. It is so cool. It's like you're like some other world. Like it's literally insane. And it's not like I have like some kind of like deep Disney connection with it. Like I've never even seen the movie Avatar, but it just kind of like inspires me. I'm like, wow, the Imagineers like did that. Like imagine what they're gonna do next. It's such a cool ride. I love it. It's amazing. Next question, what's the most exclusive thing you've done in the park? Okay, <laughs> so I guess we're gonna have the same answer for this one. So for my mom's 50th birthday, we did this thing at the Magic Kingdom where you have like desserts and fireworks. I have no clue what's it called. But basically you're on like this balcony that's kind of right by this restaurant that's right by the castle. It's like one of those like buildings kind of off Main Street, like close to Tomorrowland. But they have this area that has a perfect view of the castle. So basically what you do is that you like pay for each person and my mom was like, let's go big, it's my 50th. We had like a cake and then we had a great view of the fireworks and just like the projections on the castle. And it was just so magical. It's like one of those like strange memories that you just remember because I was like 10, but it was like probably the most exclusive thing that we've done and it was really cool. Yeah, like VIP tickets to like the fireworks with cake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite Disney park? <laughs> this is like such a hard question. So there's but no like, there's no clear cut answer here. Mm -mm. However, I'm going to say Magic Kingdom is like my favorite vibe. Like I love the Magic Kingdom. I love the castle. I love the different lands. Yeah. However, Animal Kingdom is so underappreciated and it has the best ride. Hands down, period. Expedition Everest, Flight of Passage, whole, the whole Avatar area, um, Dinosaur. It just has such good rides. I love, oh, the Safari, duh. I love Animal Kingdom. So those are my kind of two faves. I'm gonna say Magic Kingdom because I just love the variety. It's a classic, you can't go wrong. But as I grew up, I have found such an appreciation for Epcot. I knew you were gonna say that. I it's love Epcot so, too. It's like so crazy because whenever you're a kid, you don't like Epcot. You do not. I just started loving Epcot because oh. whenever I was a kid, I never understood that I never understood that half of it is like the future world and then half of it's like world showcase. Like now looking at like the layout, oh my god, it's just so good. And then you walk around all the countries, it's like so much fun. Yeah, Epcot was my favorite growing up and it was like, it's kind of weird because it's like future world but then it's like not future-y but they're about to redo it all and I'm so excited, so. Also, I love California Adventure. <laughs> We're, we're including Disneyland in this video too, but that leads us into our next question. Disneyland or Disney World? So I'm gonna go with Disney World because Disney World is like its whole, it is like its own world. Like you're surrounded by Disney. The hotels and everything are like, around the parks, they're themed. There's so much land. Like you're literally in your own little city of Disney. It's crazy. I'm going to say Disneyland just because recently I've been in California a lot for all of the school related purposes and then I've also been visiting my brother a lot and I've just been on the west coast a lot. I've basically just been adjusted to Disneyland recently and I'm starting to forget what Disney World looks like which is hurting me physically. I've just been spending a lot of time in Disneyland. I like it a lot. I do like all like the classic attractions, like some things you just can't beat. Going on top of that, Disney World has to be a whole entire trip. Like you have to spend multiple days there to cover everything, but Disneyland can pretty much all be done in one day if you do it right. So that's a big difference between the two parks if you're deciding on which one to go to. If you want a whole trip, a couple days planned, then I would say go to Disney World. But if you're looking for a shorter trip, then Disneyland can be done in a short amount of time. I agree, I agree. All right, our favorite hotel. My favorite hotel would probably be the Grand Floridian, but I've never stayed there. It's one of the prettiest Disney hotels and it's my dream to get married there. To stay at, I really like the Grand Californian Hotel in California. 
I just remember staying there with like my cousin and my mom, like my best friend at the time. And that was just like a really good experience for me, even though I haven't stayed there in a long time, but I just, I like it. And then I like how you can walk straight into the park also. For me, I also like Our Grand Floridian. Floridian, even though I've never stayed there. They have like that big gingerbread house at the holidays. And it's just, it's just pretty. It's just, when you think of Disney World, like that's like in the picture for me, you yeah. know? For ones I've stayed at, and I'm gonna get made fun of for this if you've been to Disney before, but I love Art of Animation. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's so good. It's like, so a lot of the Disney hotels are like actually like pretty like hotels with like little Disney like splash in there. This is like a full on like throw up Disney kind of hotel. You walk around and there's like giant statues of like King Triton and like Lightning McQueen. They have like Murphy beds that are like full on like pictures like of characters or things and you pull it out and it's like a Lightning McQueen bed or I don't know, just like weird things like that. Like it's very, it's just kind of funny to me. I always have really good experiences when we stay there. They have this food court that we would always go to before going into the parks to just kind of like, you know, if someone wanted spaghetti, they could have spaghetti. If someone wanted a burger, they could get a burger. And it was just, it's just a good place to stay. So I like art of animation. Me too. Okay, I guess that's the end of our video. If you like this, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. If you have any more Disney questions, let us know and we'll do another video. I love you. Have a great day. See you in the next one. When you wish upon a star,